Washington Grown is made possible by funding from the Washington State Department of Agriculture and the USDA Specialty Crop Block Grant Program. And by the Potato Farmers of Washington. Learn why Washington is home to the world's most productive potato fields and farmers by visiting potatoes.com. Hi everyone, I'm Christy Gorenson and welcome to Washington Grown. Rotation crops are extremely important for Washington farmers and some of the most important rotation crops here in eastern Washington are peas, lentils, and chickpeas. Today we're learning how Washington's legumes are helping farmers save the planet. I'm visiting Basic American Foods to see their bean processing plant. There's probably not a Mexican fast food restaurant out there that is not using our beans. And I'm making special Ethiopian cuisine at Feast World Kitchen in Spokane. Now is when we start crying. This is so strong. You have makeup. <laughs> <laughs> then I'm visiting Mater Farms. As much as I love my parents, my first words weren't mom or dad, they were combine or tractor. All this and more today on Washington Grown. My favorite part of the day. <laughs> you gave me this job just to keep me occupied, didn't you? This is what fine dining is all about right here. Oh, 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 oh. I can eat these all day. <laughs> you all make this look so simple and easy. Cheers to that. <laughs> I only hang out in pretty potato fields. <laughs> Whether you're from Washington or Ethiopia, we're all neighbors. That's the mindset here at Feast World Kitchen in Spokane, a nonprofit organization focused on supporting refugees and immigrants. Every day, a new immigrant chef brings their unique cuisine to Eastern Washington. It's great to share a piece of culture and a piece of community that is through food, which in my family growing up is a big experience of love. We like trying different cultures' food. Yeah. It's a good place to do that. I think all the take is a couple bites, we'll be wanting to come back. I came here for a good future for me and for my family too. Mesa Abudia is the co-director of FEAST. As an asylum seeker from Jordan, she knows what it feels like to seek community in a new country and how food can bring all sorts of people together. For now we have uh, 85 chefs. It's a rotation. 85? 85, 85 chefs. chefs. Yeah, wow. and, uh, some of them really talented and they used to have restaurant in their own country. It's like traveling all over the world in this small kitchen. It's very important for those refugee and immigrant to start blending with the community. So experience Jordanian food here, Syrian, Sudanese. And they're giving them a chance by giving them an outlet to share their culture with everybody here. It was nice to come to a place and get home-cooked food and support local people. It tastes like as if your mother is cooking for you. That's, that's how it feels for me. You want to do something that you love and I love to support those immigrant and refugee and I love what I'm bringing to the community. Yeah, I love everything about it. Yeah. Stay tuned later in the show when Chef Beiti and I make Dorawat, a special Ethiopian dish accompanied by delicious Washington lentils. What do people say when they taste your food? They're so happy. Sometimes they cry because sometimes I do spicy. <laughs> A few years ago, we toured Basic American Foods in Moses Lake to see how they're turning fresh Washington potatoes into dehydrated mashed goodness for Thanksgiving dinner. Well, today we're back again, only this time we're talking about beans. So on yeah. this end of the plant is the bean process, yeah. and the other end of the plant is the potato process. Mike Dodds is the raw material manager for Basic American Foods. He works with growers to get pinto beans to make into refried beans for restaurants. We bring these raw beans in, we run them through our process, and basically do what you do at home. Yeah. We soak them, we cook them, and then we form them. Then we take all the water out of them. So when you get it at home, you get a bag of dried product, and all you have to do is add water. Add water. Instead of hours, in minutes you have refried beans. Love that. 
I want that at home. <laughs> we want you to have that yeah, at home, too. Yeah, I kind of want that at home. Brian Miners is the plant manager at Basic American. The product he and his team produce makes its way into restaurants all over. I tell my friends and family that any taco you can think of as a restaurant, we're behind them usually with the refried beans because they want to be quick service. There's probably not a Mexican fast food restaurant out there that is not using our beans just because it's so convenient. You know, even in the little town of Moses Lake, it's very hard to drive down any street in town and not go by our customers. Right. That's a lot of burritos. That's we are, a lot of burritos. <laughs> we are making. We bring beans in from uh, not only Washington, but other growing areas. So they, uh, some of them are railed in. What our teams notice is that the beans that are grown here are usually a brighter, larger bean than what we get in other regions. So Washington grows good looking beans. Yes, we do. <laughs> so, yeah, we grow a lot of good looking stuff here. So. <laughs> we do. Time to tour the plant. So this is really, really big. <laughs> yeah, it is. It's a quarter million pounds of beans. Oh my God. Okay. Now we need to get out of agriculture yeah. and get into food processing. From here, the beans are washed and then go through a process to remove debris. If there's any foreign material, it's gonna get stuck under the slats. The beans go over. Just like a river. We work really hard to make sure they are clean, clean beans. Yeah. Next, we climb to the top of the plant where the beans are run through more de-rockers than pre-soaked for cooking. The heat that I'm feeling up here, is that from the water? Or? Yeah, the heat you're feeling up here is all this hot water. They have very good skin if they yeah. had to like spend right. a lot of time in right. here. <laughs> from here, the beans are cooked formed and then head into a dryer. So at this point, the beans kind of look like brown beef almost. Yes, they do. They're close to the consistency of a can refried bean. Yeah. They're about that same moisture that would come out of a can. But now we're gonna take them down to a shelf-stable dry moisture and we'll get a year shelf life out of these beans. Once the beans are dehydrated, they're seasoned, packaged, and then sent to the customer. People, for some reason, think that anything dehydrated is not real. Yeah. And that's not the case at all, right? right? These are real raw materials that are going in. We're not altering them at all. All we're doing is taking the water out of it yeah. and making it more convenient for people to use. And you know, we have to end the day with a taste test. Delicious. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Thank you. We work hard to make oh, it. Oh, so. I can tell you work hard. <laughs> that is so delicious. Hey, let's go. If you're looking to satisfy a Middle Eastern fix, then check out Jerusalem Middle Eastern cuisine. Now you can experience Jerusalem style food right here in Spokane. We brought the Middle East to Washington. Middle East to Washington. I love it. Majda Ritchie started the business because she was craving the type of food she used to get back at home. Her goal? To make all of her customers feel like they're in Jerusalem. First of all, I was just very pregnant. <laughs> I was craving like our Middle Eastern like okay. fresh food and okay. I just couldn't find it anywhere. There was Middle Eastern food right. and it was good, good food, right. but it wasn't representing my food. Today, we're trying Majda's falafel, made with fried Washington chickpeas, hummus, pickles, and a bright sesame sauce. Boy, look at the size of that thing. Yeah, there you go. That's a messy meal, mm -hmm. but it's well worth it. I am expecting that tzatziki sauce, and it's not there. But you know what? With the pickles and the hummus, I don't miss it. It's lovely. Now let's see what folks think of this Jerusalem falafel made right here in Washington. It looks delicious. That's pretty good. Oh, look, I mean, it didn't take long for that smile to come out. That's pretty good. It has a nice flavor, like a little bit of mustard. Mm. There's so much happening in my mouth right now. I don't know, it's really good though. <laughs> it's like the perfect texture. It has like that crunch factor at the beginning, but then it just kind of melts in your mouth. We need more garbanzo beans in our life, and if there's any way for us to get more, I think this is the ticket. Absolutely, absolutely. <laughs> awesome. Coming up, I'm making traditional Ethiopian cuisine at Feast World Kitchen. Now is when we start crying. Don't this cry. is so strong. We have makeup. 
And we're in the kitchen at Second Harvest trying out some lentil tacos. My name is Bethlehem. I'm from Ethiopia. This is coffee from Ethiopia. After eat everything and then we have coffee. This is our culture, real life. Every uh, different country, they have culture. Our culture is coffee. I want to try my coffee. Yeah, I love it. Bethlehem, or as she's called Beiti, is a refugee living here in Spokane. As a mother of two, one of her greatest joys is cooking traditional Ethiopian dishes like this one with Washington lentils. Before she's coming over here, she was in a refugee camp in Egypt. Mesa Abudia is the co-director of Feast World Kitchen, a nonprofit organization that allows immigrant chefs like Beiti to come in and cook for customers. Today, Beiti's cooking a special Ethiopian dish called dorawat. The first time she cooked dorawat, it was really good, and I told her, you have to share this. In Ethiopian culture, you don't use utensils. Instead, you eat with a special bread called injera. The injera is basically like a bread. It's kind of like a pancakey texture. You're supposed to tear it. It's really like spongy and bubbly, and then you're supposed to scoop it with your hands. Pinch a little bit of food. Fingers. The injera itself is really tangy. Um, it's not what you would necessarily expect out of a pancake. Warm spices, lots of flavor. You just melt in your mouth. It's, it's <laughs> delicious. Time to cook with Chef Beatty. And something smells really, really good. That's a surprise. <laughs> <laughs> it is a surprise. It smells <laughs> delicious. What do we have in here right now? Doro what? Doro what? Doro okay. what? And that is a traditional dish? Yes, my country. They have a chicken leg mm -hmm. and they have egg. It smells delicious. Beatty's going to show me how to prepare Doro what, starting by cutting up a Washington grown red onion. I will let you. Cut the onion. Okay. Yes, because I think you're the expert at it. Now is when we start crying. This is so strong. You have makeup. <laughs> <laughs> we may have struggled a little. Yeah, I'm crying. Are you crying? <laughs> yeah. It's really strong. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> we put some oil in the pan, then add some bearberry spice blend, cardamom, and a special seven spice blend. So this is yeah. heavy on the spice. Yes. Burberry. Burberry. Burb. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> From here, Beatty adds chicken and hard boiled eggs, then cooks for over two hours. What do people say when they taste your food? They're so happy. Sometimes they cry because sometimes I do spicy. <laughs> I'm so tired, and then after that, I sleep. Customer, they're happy. Yeah. I say, well, it's all worth it. Yeah. Beatty also prepared two side dishes with Washington lentils and Washington potatoes. Next up, it's time to prep the special Ethiopian bread. Bread called injera. Injera? Yeah. Okay. So it's almost yeah. like a crepe or a pancake or something like that. Whoa! I have no idea how to eat this. Okay, so have to show I me. want to show you now how you <laughs> eat. Be careful, you close. Yep. That's delicious. Oh, there's the spice. Yeah, mm -hmm. it's coming. <laughs> Everything just works so well together. Just rich and spicy and yummy. You can try. Like nothing I've ever tasted, and I love it. And we can't forget about the Washington grown lentil dish. So these lentils, this doesn't take a whole lot of time to make delicious. Yeah. Just really flavorful. With injera, so good. Because it adds a little. Time. Mm -hmm. I like the lentil. Yeah, the lentil's is good, huh? <laughs> <laughs> to find more restaurants and recipes, visit us on YouTube. Atop this gorgeous hill in Dayton, miles of farmland stretch across the Palouse. The view here at Hutchins Farm is hard to beat. Clay Hutchins brought us up to his favorite spot in his green pea field. 
From up here, it's not tough to see why he loves this area so much. Why is Columbia County a good place for crops like the green peas? Have right? you looked around? <laughs> How can Columbia County not be a good place to be? It is absolutely jaw-droppingly beautiful. Columbia County has a good rainfall, very good soils. I suppose beauty is in the eye of the beholder, but anybody, if they came out to a spot like this and looked around, I think they'd have a hard time arguing with me that this is not a beautiful place to be. For farmers like Clay, sustainability is a huge concern. Anisha Du is the district manager for the Columbia Conservation District. Her job is to assist farmers in a sustainability-focused initiative called the Voluntary Stewardship Program. Projects like soil testing are supported by the program, allowing farmers to focus on keeping their fields healthy for the future. The landowners get to really own the projects because they feel like they have the freedom of being able to do that project on their own. So we've got a, a field where we've taken many soil samples. The conservation district can take that, compile data, see what we learn, so hopefully we can find where the economic thresholds of applying some of these products are to help other farmers besides just us. That's the ultimate goal is to help not just this farm, but to learn so we can continue to try to find better ways to produce food. In all of these things that we are doing, the cost is high. The amount of money that it would take to, to do some of these trials on our own is if not cost prohibitive, it's, it's at least daunting, at least scary. That's really the only way that I would be participating in something like this is because of that cost share. It is a way of them being able to actually afford to get something done instead of just having to sit there and watch it disappear. That sustainability of those farmlands is huge for our world and considering that we need food on our tables. Farming is very dynamic and very complex, and there's a lot of things that go into it. So while we are worrying about like prices going up in grocery stores, they're worrying about whether or not they're gonna be able to grow their crops this year, and that gets us our food in the grocery stores. We want our soils to be productive for a long time because ultimately, we produce a lot of food. We've got a responsibility to take care of it for the future generations that they have something that's not only beautiful, but productive to feed a world that's gonna need food. Coming up, I'm visiting Mater Farms. As much as I love my parents, my first words weren't mom or dad, they were combine or tractor. When you think of Washington, you probably think mostly of apples, wheat, and potatoes because those are some of what we produce the most of, but what you might not know is that we also produce lots of legumes. Legumes are a huge, probably underutilized, especially in their dry form, in a lot of kitchens. And I want to show you guys today that they're very easy to work with. You do have to plan ahead a little bit, but I promise you, if you tossed them in some water in the morning, by the time you came home for dinner, they would most likely be ready for you to use. But today we're gonna to show you how to do the garbanzo beans and how to soak. We're gonna put them in the bowl here, and we're just gonna fill with water over all the beans. If you're home throughout the day, you can just go through every now and then and just give them a little stir and that's it. Then you come home, rinse them off and throw them in your dish. And if you really are pinched for time and you were not able to soak your beans, canned beans are always in our pantry and you can throw them into stews if you're missing noodles or you want to substitute for something else. Beans are such an easy way to just add in a spe another element to give your soup more protein fiber and maybe a little bit more texture and color than it would have had otherwise. I hope that this encourages you to try legumes in your home and all of your soups and your dishes and that you have fun experimenting and playing with the variety that we have here in Washington State. Here in the rolling hills of Whitman County, wheat and other grains grow as far as the eye can see. But here at Mater Farms, we see something different beginning to take root. We are standing in the middle of a lentil field, right? Yes, that is okay. correct. Kevin Mater and his family are in their fifth generation of farmers here in Whitman County. You like so, it? Oh, I love it. As much as I love my parents, my first words weren't mom or dad, they were combine or tractor. Farming has evolved over the generations. Steve Mater, Kevin's father, has watched the farm change over and over again. What's amazing is my grandfather grew crops that they thought were great, that were 25 bushels of the acre every other year. And now we're growing crops that are in excess of 100 bushels with all the land used every year. And the land is in better condition now than it was in the 1900s. And it's been a pleasure to watch them take their passion and go with it and change it and 
do more with it. Yeah. Now the maters grow a wide range of crops. Some of these crops are a crucial part of a regenerative farming cycle. So the wheat takes the nitrogen out, and yep. so you plant legumes like this yep. to put it back in. Yep, these have just been planted, mm -hmm. and lentils, being a legume, are a nitrogen fixing plant and so they put nitrogen back in the ground and so it's a really healthy part of our farm rotation. But how does such a small crop put something so important back in the soil? Down here on the roots there's little nitrogen nodules. Yeah. They're already putting down some nitrogen and that is really important for the fall wheat that'll be planted behind this crop. Once the legumes have done their part, they're harvested and taken to the Mater's own cleaning facility. From here, we clean the products from the field and it works its way through all of our systems and down into our tiny bag line. Sarah Mater, Kevin's wife, manages the facility where they strive to make a positive impact. Quality is what this plant was designed for in the beginning and quality is at the top of our minds. We have a little motto to help reinforce and remind our employees, imagine the conversations people are having. We really want them to take that to heart. And we start that at the farm. So we've changed our farming practices over the years based on consumer feedback. And the heart of the brand was really born to connect the consumer to the farmer. As we look at our farming and we look to how to do things better and be better, it's important to sustain what we have. That's all part of what we do when we produce a product like this, that our family puts our name on this brand. That's kind of the nice thing, is that we have full control from when that seed goes into the ground to when it arrives at the That's consumer. Awesome. Welcome back. We are in the kitchen at Second Harvest Food Bank in Spokane, where we get to taste some awesome recipes that uh, people send in to allrecipes.com. And I have my cohorts with me today. Uh, Tomas is here to help me taste some of these recipes. Good to see you, and good to see you guys at home as well. Yeah, and we have chef and culinary uh, instructor Laurent Zarati. Very, yes. very good Thank to be you. here with you. Bonjour. Thank you very much. Bonjour, Christy. Bonjour, Bonjour yes. Thomas. <laughs> and so this episode was fun. It's one of my yeah. favorite episodes of Washington Grown because we got to do so many different things and, and learn so many different things. Yes, a very educational episode. I'm yeah. sure for you guys at home, too. Like the, the pinto beans and seeing them yeah. turned into refried beans, which I love, and then dehydrated and what they look like. It was just so cool. And to know that, you know, when you go to some Mexican restaurants in Washington and all over the place, that those could be the ones that you're eating. So lentil tacos is what we are going to be tasting today. Okay, there you go. What? Lentil tacos? I like that. Yeah. Lentil is another legume that is great for protein and, and minerals and vitamins and, and such a variety of lentils. The red, the yellow, the green, the dupuis. My favorite, the caviar, the black one, the beluga. Oh, wow, they are delicious. Nice. And, and so this is well. vegan yeah. version yeah. of Good. your classic taco, uh, using lentils instead of ground beef, along with all those other taco flavors that we know and love. So let's see how we make these lentil tacos. Okay.
This is so beautiful. It's bright. And it yeah. looks, it looks hearty. I want to I mean, eat it. It looks delicious. I love the idea of being able to uh, replace the standard ground beef or chicken with something like lentils. Right. Yeah. So this is good for meatless Mondays and Taco Tuesdays. Right. Right? <laughs> I like that. I, I love lentils. I like it and, as an it's, alternative. It's, it's right there. It's right, right in the Palouse. It's very flavorful. And it's just, it's so awesome. I mean, lentils are one of those foods, again, where they're probably in your pantry right now and you don't even know what to do with them. These are the exact kind of recipes you need to kind of kick those lentils up into something that's very flavorful and tasty. Yes. So some of the uh, comments, uh, make these for your Taco Tuesday get together. Uh, even your most carnivore of carnivores will like them. So I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Eat those lentils. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Great lentil tacos. Thank you, exactly. Isaacondra for uh, sending us this recipe. And make sure uh, to tag us on Facebook, check us out on Facebook, Instagram, all of our social media, uh, subscribe to our YouTube channel. Uh, we have a magazine that you can find in local grocery stores. Uh, Washington Grown is everywhere, so check us out. <laughs> <laughs> to get the recipe for lentil tacos, visit wagrown.com. There's a lot of power packed behind those little plants, so eat your Washington legumes. That's it for this episode of Washington Grown. We'll see you next time. <laughs>